So the Pixel 8 is actually not that far away and in all honesty we have more details about this device than you can shake a stick at. So here's the full picture of Google's next Pixel smartphone lineup. As I noted, there is a ton to unpack when it comes to the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, namely the code names that leaked a few months ago for the duo. These are Shiba and Husky, respectively. That's all part of the puzzle, but we have more to discuss. Google isn't shaking things up too much this time around, emphasis on that too much portion, because there are a few more tweaks to the Pixel 7 recipe, which itself was a reiteration or slight rejig of the Pixel 6. Things are going to be fairly familiar, but with improvements that you may be happy to see. The earliest renders indicate that the Pixel 8 Pro is going to actually ditch the curved screen, something that many people out there lament, and will get a flat panel on a premium device for the first time in a while. While. You'll also note that the camera bar is receiving a few more tweaks. Yes, there is going to be a metal frame as was introduced on the Pixel 7, but the cameras are now set to be contained within a singular pillar shape cutout on both devices. Of course, this doesn't change much on the Pixel 8, but the pill cutout looks a little larger on the Pro model based upon renders and a leaked PVT model which appeared in a few weeks ago and shows just how this will look on the real thing later this year when it is unveiled. It's not a huge departure, but it is noticeable altered. Even the device dimensions are pretty similar to the previous gen. The Pixel 8 were measuring at 150.5 by 70.8 by 8.9 millimeters, while the Pro will come in at 162.6 by 76.5 and is 8.7 millimeters thick. That is of course half the story as thanks to reporting by Camilla Wojciechowski, exclusively on Android Authority, the Pixel 8 will have a 6.17 inch flat panel, which is a lot smaller than the current gen, while the Pixel 8 Pro is set to retain a 6.7 7 inch screen, although that will also be flat as I noted. Camilla also revealed that the OLED screens are getting improved later this year too. The Pixel 8 will be sticking to a 2400 by 1080p screen, but will have a boosted 427 PPI as a result of that smaller 6.17 inch screen size. It does have a 1400 nit peak brightness, which is up from 1000 nits on the Pixel 7. Another move you will be pleased about is the bump from a 90 to 120 hertz screen on that baseline Pixel 8, which does keep the Pixel 7a at eye arm's length, especially for those looking to decide between the two. What's also interesting is that Google looks to have opted for a slightly smaller 2992 by 1344 resolution panel for the Pixel 8 Pro instead of the old 3120 by 1440 standard, giving this a pixel per inch density of 490, which is actually down from 512, which might make a difference to you if you really want the highest resolution screen. However, it is note worth noting that the screen brightness will jump up from 1000 to 60 1600 nits. That's not all though as the Pixel 8 Pro's 120 hertz capable screen will have even better variable refresh rates with smoother transitions between 60 and 120 hertz, which should improve issues with screen tearing and will work in a similar manner to something like an AMD FreeSync monitor, which uses the graphics to attune to the screen available to you. A lot of people and potential buyers have been turned off the Pixel series in recent years because of the, of course, perceived lack of a true flagship processor. Google is continuing with the Tensor series, which might be disappointing to some of you to hear, but the Tensor G3 could provide some important and substantial improvements over the previous gen. This time around, it turns out the G3 will be equipped with a one plus four plus four CPU setup featuring Cortex X3 and four Cortex A715 cores and four Cortex A510 cores. All of these clocked at various speeds you can see on screen. Our report, courtesy of Camilla Wojciechowski again, also indicates that the new chipset will utilize ARM Mali G715 graphics. There's no definitive word on the shader core count, but it is believed that we could be looking at 10 cores and ray tracing support. An apparent Tensor G3 Geekbench 5 listing posted online has also showed 1,186 single core and 3,809 multi-core scores for this upcoming processor. That isn't exactly earth shattering. In fact, it would actually put Google's next flagship chip at around the 2022 flagship level and devices like the Poco F5, which is a cheap phone in its own right, would actually outperform the Pixel 8 series, at least on paper, if this is a legitimate test score, which of course is debatable. And we always say to take these Geekbench listings with a pretty substantial grain of salt. Tensor hasn't ever really been touted as a powerhouse smartphone processor, it's worth noting. Instead, Google has leaned into things like machine learning algorithms and post-processing for images. That seems pretty sensible, at least until Google really does figure out and can 
compete more directly with Qualcomm on their Snapdragon or top tier Snapdragon processors. While you might not get most the most frames in games like Genshin Impact and Call of Duty Mobile, if you're a mobile gamer, most Pixel phones can do everything that you'll need of a modern smartphone, things like texting, calling, all that kind of thing. And the Pixel 8 series is a pretty is going to be pretty good for multitasking, much like the Pixel 7, as the baseline is sticking with 8GB of RAM, while the Pixel 8 Pro will come with 12GB of RAM as standard. One thing we're really hoping for with these new upcoming devices is better power and heat management with that third generation Tensor processor. And it's here where most of the complaints really do lie with the Tensor series, at least from our perspective. Thankfully though, we know specs for the batteries, although we don't know what heat management will be like, Based on a source inside Google, the base model will offer 4,485 milliamp hours on that device, up from the Pixel 7's minimum 4,270 milliamp hour internal cell, which is actually typically rated at 4,355 milliamp hours. The Pro model is also getting an upgrade from 4,926 milliamp hours to 4,950 milliamp hours. Not massive, but it will hopefully make a difference if this processor is a little bit more tuned to power efficiency. As for the charging speeds, which is an area that you see a lot of complaints as well, this is getting an upgrade here too. You can expect a boost of four watts on the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, bringing wired charging up to 24 watts and 27 watts respectively, even though Google does rate the current gen at 30 watts. However, wireless charging will be staying at 20 watts for the standard model and 23 watts for the Pro. It seems that, of course, to achieve these speeds, you'll still need the Pixel Stand from 2020. That's gonna be a requirement for those fast charge wireless charging options. Rounding out the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro are some camera hardware improvements, plus an interesting new sensor being added to that latter model. Let's start with the Pixel 8 Pro as the big upgrade this year will be a jump from the ISOCELL GN1 primary camera used on the Pixel 6 and Pixel 7 families to the newer ISOCELL GN2. This is still a 50 megapixel sensor, but it will provide a host of new capabilities, including 35% more light processing, the possibility of 8K 30S video capture, and staggered HDR images. Additionally, the Pixel 8 Pro should get a new ultra-wide camera jumping from the dated 12 megapixel Sony IMX386 to uh, the brand new or more usable 64 megapixel Sony IMX787, which, as you may notice, is the same sensor used for the primary camera on the brand new Google Pixel 7a. The telephoto should stay the same, and the thermometer feature, which we have not really discussed yet, I'll get to that in just a little bit. Finally, though, the Pixel 8 Pro will also get an improved time of flight sensor. The new device has a 8x8 time of flight VL53L8 sensor, a significant upgrade over the ST Microelectronics VL53L1 that we've seen in previous Pixels. And this should hopefully or greatly improve autofocus, which isn't a huge strong suit of the Pixel in recent years. And it's definitely one of those things that you might not necessarily think about, but is a really important aspect of any smartphone camera worth its salt. So as for the regular Pixel 8, we expect it to only get one upgrade, the ISOCELL GN1 to the GN2 primary sensor. All other hardware should be the same as what we now have on the Pixel 7, which means it should be on par, but hopefully with better stills with that main image. Of course, now let's talk about that temperature sensor as back in May, a leaked tutorial video actually revealed that the mystery sensor under the camera flash on the Pixel 8 Pro could be an infrared thermometer. Based on this video, in order to use the sensor, you'll need to bring the phone close to your forehead, then move it slowly to your temple for readings. And the phone provides sounds and vibrations to assist this process, so hopefully the guidance is pretty solid. Reportedly though, this sensor can also be used to measure the temperature of objects in your surroundings as well. According to this leak, the data collected from the measurements is stored locally and will be handled through the Android private compute core. This would mean that the data won't end up somewhere in Google servers, it will only be saved directly on your device. Just what this will be useful for remains to be seen, but it could be integrated into the Health Connect function and used in tandem with some of the other Fitbit functions that you'll find on the Pixel Watch. But as we know at this point in time, it's really hard to tell. Our biggest concern though is if this actually just ends up being merely a gimmick added to the camera to make it seem more important than it is. The Pixel series has been no stranger to adding gimmicks to devices over the years, and it's odd to see Google add something that appears to have little utility outside of sporadic health use cases. We're hoping there's more to this than just taking temperatures, but we'll see come the keynote later this year. 
Naturally, the Pixel 8 will ship with Android 14, but there's nothing yet concrete in Android 14 itself to indicate any extra features. Android 14 itself just includes modest upgrades to the system that we've seen since Android 13, including some added material you customization. It's by no means groundbreaking, but it does have some long overdue options and quality of life features that have been added. Just what Google is picking up for the Pixel 8 series, especially with regard to Android 14, is yet to be uncovered, but we do actually have official wallpapers for this device. Google's moving on from the animals and specifically birds in favor of minerals this year. There are light and dark versions and they drop huge hints to the device colors, which are slated to be haze, jade, licorice, and peony. I'll leave a link to download these wallpapers down in the video description below if you do want to add them to your own device, but it gives a little hint of what you could see on your home screen when the Pixel 8 does launch. The only thing we really have left to discuss with the Pixel 8 is actually the pricing, which is a little bit of a murky area as early rumors suggest that we're going to see a mini price surge over the previous gens. Reliable leaker Yogi Bra has a pretty good track record and states that the Pixel 8 series could start at $50 or $100 more than the Pixel 7 and this will put the baseline model at around $649 or $699 as a start price. Sadly though he has not shared any pricing for the Pixel 8 Pro or any final pricing has yet to be unearthed. Fingers crossed though it doesn't receive a huge price hike but personally I've got to say I'm not confident if the Pixel 8 the baseline model will start at up to $100 more as I would expect the Pixel 8 Pro to go higher up the price in totem to give them more separation. Realistically though, realistically though, what more can Google do to make the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro more competitive in your eyes? Being incremental in upgrades and upgrades does seem quite ridiculous and frivolous from those of us really into tech and owned in on all things technology, but the numbers and the abundance of Google smartphones out in the wild show that you don't actually need to be the objectively best in the business in all areas to start to make inroads into a pretty crowded smartphone space. I want to ask you though, you start to see more Google Pixel devices out in the wild, or do you have any thoughts on the upcoming Pixel 8 series? Throw that in a comment down in the comment sections below. It's always interesting to hear some sort of conversation about this. As always though, this is Damon with Android Authority telling you everything you need to know about the Google Pixel 8. Cheers for watching and I will catch you in a bit.